If you just could remain standing briefly for the reading of God's word, I'll appreciate it. Amen. If you're not uh, well, you may be seated. Or if you're holding a baby, you may be seated, but you're well able and strong. Just for respect for God's word. If the president walked in here, you would be standing, is it? Oh, if you're MCA, you know, walked in, you know. The book of Mark, chapter 2, is my text, which I started out last Sunday by the grace of God. From verse 1, I want to just read a couple of verses there. Started a series on faith, which I, I intend to really linger on for a while so that you can understand that there's nothing else that you've been left with but faith in God. Uh, you have to understand that even your being born again and being saved is by faith through grace. Amen. Not by works that anybody should boast. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, but it's by faith. Somebody says it's by faith. I uh, had uh, Frederick Price uh, teaching some time ago and I was trying to kind of Google him last night as I was thinking about uh, the Frederick Price, of course, now he's too old. His son has taken over the ministry. But Frederick Price taught about how we stand on faith. Okay? We live by faith. And we walk by faith. Standing, living, and walking. Bible says, and again, uh, he entered uh, into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. I love that noise thing. I can't get over it, how uh, people used to be so excited about Jesus Christ. And, uh, they would noise it all over the place, meaning that they would tell everybody, Jesus is in the house, Jesus is in the house, you know. Uh, how Christians nowadays are not noising, Jesus is in the house. How Christians nowadays don't noise that uh, let's go to church, let's go to the house of the Lord. It was noise. Somebody said noise. Jesus is in the house. Let's go to the house. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Let's go to the house. What happened to the excitement of noising? Jesus is in the house. And straight away many were gathered together in so much that uh, there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And uh, he preached the word unto them. He did not preach politics. He did not preach tribalism. He did not even preach BBI. Sorry. He preached the word to them. Hallelujah. Preachers need to read this verse over and over again to understand that when you stand behind the holy podium, your main responsibility is not to preach BBI. Let the politicians do that with all due respect. You did not come to hear about BBI from me. You understand me? Uh, but you came to hear the word. You didn't even come to see me. You came to hear the word. Praise the Lord. Preach the word to them. And they came unto him, uh, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and... Uh, when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Uh, I, won't, I can read the whole thing, but just for the purposes of time, let us just pray for the word. Father, thank you for the word. Bless it to our hearing. Bless it to our heart. Let heaven rejoice. I pray, Lord, that I will do justice and say what I need to say and represent you well. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. You may be seated. Uh, 
Last Sunday, by the grace of God, I finished on that point where I said that uh, faith has got stages and dimensions. Amen. And I was able to touch on the first one, which was that faith, the first dimension of faith is uh, redemption, where God comes and uh, opens up your eyes, and when you see him as he is, uh, then you see your sinnerhood, and when you see your sinnerhood, then it breaks you, and then you realize how much you need Jesus Christ, for no one can really come to Jesus Christ uh, unless they are drawn by the spirit of the living God. So I showed you from scripture last Sunday that uh, you see your sinnerhood. I can't uh, forget the, la the first time I, I came into contact with Jesus Christ, somebody who was a friend of my father, they used to go to church together, and uh, he came home and started sharing Jesus with me, just in a normal way, and I, my eyes were opened, and I was still uh, in school as a young boy, uh, and uh, I saw my sinnerhood, and uh, believe you me, I had not killed anybody, I had not done the bad things that people do as much, but I still saw how a sinner I was, and I couldn't help but to, tears started flowing from my eyes right down to my cheeks as I saw how a sinner I am, and uh, that is the first dimension of faith. I had faith in Jesus Christ and uh, he saved me. Uh, I, I was a sinner. I was lost in sin. Uh, I could join uh, John Newton in singing Amazing Grace. How sweet that sound uh, that saved a wretch uh, like me. I found myself and I saw myself like a wretch. And that's the first uh, level of faith where you see yourself uh, as a wretch and then you give your heart to Jesus Christ. Jesus comes by his power and by his grace he saves you, redeems you that's the first one, just like many people have been redeemed and they are so happy and we see redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed but it doesn't stop there You move on, according to the text, you find Jesus Christ speaks to this person who was sick of palsy and says your sins are forgiven thee. And people started murmuring and they started uh, talking behind the burk, wondering who is this that can forgive sins. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, uh, saw their murmurings. And I love this scripture because uh, the point I have for this is because your faith must be so strong, it should be able to work in spite of the murmurings of the people. If you get the revelation, you're going to be a happy person. Because people are going to talk anyhow. Look at your neighbor and tell them, people are going to talk about you anyhow. Oh yes, there are people who are going to talk to you even if you cut your head and give it to them. Like John the Baptist, they're still going to criticize you. They're still not going to like you, but that's not a problem. Your faith should be so strong. Your faith should surmount all obstacles and all the murmurings. And by the way, let me tell you, nobody gets blessed who does not have a, a backbone to be talked about. They don't talk about nobodies. They talk about people who are going somewhere. And as I look around you, and as I look at people who are seated in this church today, I see people who are going somewhere. So praise yourself for people talking about you. People don't talk about people who do nothing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So they were murmuring. Say they were murmuring. They were murmuring about somebody who had been forgiven. I don't know if they talked about you when you got saved. For me, they gave me a week. Others gave me a month. The others gave me a year. They kept some of those, oh, you know, we don't know whether they're going to make it and stuff, you know, and on and on and on. But you have to brace yourself uh, to be a person who can take it. Uh, uh, you can take the licking and you can keep on kicking. That's what Bishop Jake says. Take the licking and keep on kicking kicking. Uh, that's what champions do. Champions take the licking and they keep on If you're not ready for people to murmur about you and your faith, please don't endeavor to go to the second dimension that I'm about to talk about today. For the second dimension basically talks about uh, you being a person who can rise up. Somebody say rise up. Jesus says rise up. I command you in the name of Jesus to rise up this morning. It means that you can be saved but you can still be sick. It means that you can be saved, but you can still be broke. 
It means that you, until you get to the second dimension, which I want to bring you to, I want to bring somebody today coming out just from being redeemed, which is the first level. I want to bring you to the second level of redemption, which is, by the way, when you get redeemed and you are saved, God commands you to rise up. means that you don't have to be broke anymore. You don't have to be sick anymore. You don't have to be possessed anymore. You don't have to be under anymore because you have risen up. Jesus looked at somebody and said, rise up. I command somebody this morning to just move on from the first dimension of faith to come to the second dimension of faith, which is actually rising up. Can you rise up on your feet right now? As I just you're rising up. Hallelujah. From being sat down and from being a oppressed by the forces of hell and demons and people and opinions of people you are rising up you cannot be redeemed and still remain in the same level where you're just sitting down jesus christ said rise up hallelujah be seated for a minute he says rise up son rise up I want you to rise up in your finances this morning. I want you to rise up in your thinking this morning. I want you to rise up from being demon possessed in the name of Jesus. I want you to rise up from oppression and depression this morning. How can you be redeemed and be depressed in the same time? Jesus Christ, oh God, I feel an anointing in this place. How can you be saved and redeemed and still be obsessed by all sorts of diseases crippling you? Jesus Christ, the second level of faith is where God tells you to rise up. And I feel like somebody this morning is moving to the second level of faith where God tells you to rise up. You cannot be redeemed in the blood of Jesus Christ and still be oppressed. Second level <laughs> is where you rise up. Hallelujah. You rise up. Glory to God. Somebody is rising up. You're not sick anymore in Jesus' name. Can you shout amen? amen? Healing is your portion in the name of Jesus. You will not die but declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. Say amen. amen. The snare is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. You are free now. You can rise up. Just like a child that is born again. He can rise up. He can walk. He can be who God ordained them to be. You are rising. You are not the same person you used to be. Somebody give God some praise and some glory in the house. Sit down for a minute. I am sick and tired of Christians who just stay at the level of redemption. That is just the, the kindergarten of faith. That's for toddlers. But you have, God did not save you to sit down and to be oppressed and to be doing nothing. God saved you so that you can rise up. In fact, let me say, God saved you so we can see you. And we cannot see you because you are too seated down. You, you are so obscured and so covered in the crowd. You need to stand up. You have to rise up so that we can see. That's the second dimension of faith that God wants to rise up to. We cannot see you. You are too seated, doing nothing, warming the seats. So broke, cannot give for nothing. No project, no, dem, no contribution, nothing. You're just in the redemption stage. So Jesus Christ looks at this person and says, uh, you're not just uh, a guy who's afflicted by a palsy, yes. First, of, first and foremost, your sins are forgiven. Let's, let's clear that first. All right? And people started talking. I want to insulate somebody here from people talking. Don't let them bother you. I want, I want to insulate somebody this morning. Amen? Let the people mama, whatever they want to mama. They did not stop the miracle from happening. Oh, they did not stop. They did not stop the man from rising up. You're still rising up. Moving from glory to glory. From strength to strength. Am I talking to somebody this morning? You're still moving on. Let them mama about you. Let them talk about you. It comes with a package. They don't talk. By the way, the moment they talk about you, it means there's something happening in your life. That's okay. I can take the talking, but I can also take the rising up better. You are rising up in Jesus' name. 
this morning when I was coming, I was actually from last night, I was feeling like I just need to come and profess that to people. You know, just to rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up from the bed. Rise up from being afflicted. Rise up from being put down. Rise up from being depressed. Rise up from just being put down. Rise up. I don't know who I'm to. Rise up from crying from morning to evening. Rise up from people just talking about you and wondering. And you're too mindful of what people are saying. Please forget it and keep on moving. And rise, cry your shoulders and move on. How long are you going to be lying in that bed? Yes, you're saved. Yes, you're born again. Yes, you're redeemed. And yes, you sing about the power of the blood. And there is power, yes, in the blood. But you need to rise up. Rise up. Son, rise up. Second thing that Jesus says, he says, third thing, the third dimension, he says, take up your bed. Look at your neighbor say, take up your bed. It means that what used to take you, you are now taking it. <laughs> the habits and the, 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 the mannerisms that used to control you, now you can control them. You can tell them to hell, you Satan. I am now the one in charge. I am the one in control. Some of you had some habits that really controlled you. I don't know where you, what it was. Maybe it was drugs. Maybe it was alcohol. Maybe it was immorality. Whatever it is that took hold of you. Jesus Christ takes the person to the third dimension. Somebody say third dimension. The third dimension is where you are in control. You don't have to, hey, yeah, yeah, we used to sing the song. The places I used to go, I don't go to them anymore. The songs I used to sing, I don't sing them anymore. That is the time when you get to that place where now you take it by the horns and say, listen, I am not under your control anymore. I am the boss in this situation. I will say no to some mannerism and habits that used to control me long time ago. He says, pick up your bed. That used to carry you. You can carry it now. You cannot be redeemed and you cannot rise. And you're not in control. Oh, that's a good point. The reason why you need to go to a good church is that a good church will teach you how to rise. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I am not boasting. Far from it. But if you come to this church from the day we started, you will never see lines of people waiting to be counseled. You will never see lines of people waiting to be counseled. Talking to a bishop friend of mine, he says, how do you do that? I said, listen, when I'm preaching, I'm counseling. But I can preach in such a way that I make you lame. In such a way that every time you come here, you don't get enough. And so the thing that you'll follow from Monday to Friday, I'll have queues of people waiting to be canceled. But every time you come on Sunday here, you get something that builds your inner faith in your heart. You get stronger, you get bigger, and you don't have to depend on me. I am not your God. I am just a mouthpiece. You cannot be a person who depends on me and having queues from here to the gate wanting to be canceled. Canceled for what? You got the word so you can stand up and be who God called you to be. So I will never make you dependent on me. Some pastors love that. They love to be dependent on. Oh, so there are 10 people who want to, be see, to see you. Please. Oh, today we had 60 people who, who wanted to see the bishop. They wanted, what do they want? Canceling. What are you doing on Sunday? Canceling. Guys who are so dependent on the pastor. Even you want to be dependent on who to marry. You are laughing, it happens. It happens. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They want the bishop to choose for them the woman to marry. You are a man with beards and you want me to choose for you a woman to marry. Am I the one who's going to be that woman? Please, you pick up your woman so you can stay with them. So when they bring you hell and high water, I won't be there. People who make others dependent. My business is to teach you to rise and to be in control. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're not a robot that is going to be dependent on me all the time, Pastor. Who do I marry? Oh, well, please. Uh, first of all, I will even answer you. And then you come home. Secondly, oh, Pastor, do I get this house? Uh, yeah. Listen, come and show me the house and let me bless it. If you don't want it, we'll sell it the next day. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? But don't be dependent. I'm not. God, I am, your, I am your messenger. I am just a messenger boy. All I do every Sunday morning is to bring you a word and tell you this is what God wants you to hear. As for this time, next Sunday is going to be something else that God is going to bring fresh manna so that you keep on moving and going higher and higher and greater and greater. Somebody give God some praise in this house because you're not supposed to depend on me. Rise up. Jesus Christ told that man, rise up. I will not be walking with you. You will be walking by yourself from this point on. And that's my fourth dimension of faith, walking in victory. He says, begin to walk. That's my fourth dimension, walk by yourself. You don't need anybody to depend on you. You just need to walk by yourself. Walk, 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 walk by yourself. You don't need people to keep on walk by yourself. From this day on, God wants you to walk with him. Walk with God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Walking by yourself means that you have options. I've always told you this, is that? I told you the story that I don't like going to places with people's cars. I don't like because if I go to a place with you and you don't want to go, I'll have to wait for you. Is that so? If you say you want to stay longer in that function, I'll have to wait for you to finish. I like going with my own car. Because I like to be by myself. I have options. Somebody says say, options. That's what I want you to become from this day onwards. You can walk by yourself. You are not holding on to crutches of somebody supporting you. And if they don't support you, you crumble again. You're not washing on clean. You have to sing their song. And you have to bow before them. And you have to kneel before them. You've got to be a person who can walk by yourself. You don't have to be a person who always has to keep on licking people's boots. So that you can be who God called you to be. God sent me this morning to tell somebody here. He wants you to walk by yourself. Whether they are for you or not for you, whether they're supporting you or not supporting you, you are still walking uh, by yourself. Uh, you are still going uh, by your. Somebody ought to give God some praise and some glory, and then you're walking. Glory. So, if they don't pay your rent, you're chased out. So, if they don't give you some money, you're gone. No, 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 no. Let God be God. Have a seat. Let me tell you a story. When I left NPC, when God called me, oh, people came to try and talk to me. Oh, do you know what you're doing, man? I said, yeah, I know. I think God has called me. I'm feeling the call of God in my life. I said, no, 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 no. no. You can't do that. You can't leave NPC. No, no, no. NPC is the prestigious church. In Nairobi, NPC, everybody wants to be a pastor. In NPC, you cannot. I said, no, no, no. I feel a call. There's nothing wrong with the church. It's just a call of God, I feel. And they sent delegation after delegation to try and convince me. In my heart, one morning, I said, God, if you have ceased to be God, 
I can never survive without NPC. And NPC has become my God. May I perish. If NPC has taken the place of God, that I cannot walk on my own without. Never, ever get to that place where you can't walk by yourself. Nothing wrong with good things. Nothing wrong with great charges. Are you able to walk by yourself? My last point because of time. Fifth dimension. I'll continue this message maybe next Sunday. I'll preach something else different. The Bible says Jesus Christ looked at the guy with the palsy and told him, Go home. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. Go home. Say that with me. Go. Go home. Go home. Go home. Bishop, what is the revelation about going home here? Anything you get by faith that you cannot take to your home is a waste of time. You can be so happy right here in church praising God, lifting up his holy name. And that is just about one and a half hours or two hours max. But let me tell you, the bulk majority of time of your faith being experienced and practiced, it is in your home. And so he says what happens in the church must also happen in your home. The anointing you feel in this church should also happen in your home. So he talks to this man of path and tells them, go home. Every time I talk about home, it reminds me of Bishop Jakes. Sitting down with him having lunch. One of his sons got into trouble. Called him. And he said, son, come home. I don't care what they're saying. I don't care the, the scandal. I don't care the press. I don't care the newspapers. Son, come home. Then he talked to us and told the sons, listen to this. Every time you go out, maybe you could go out and life can be rough and tough. And it may be difficult. Scandals and everything and the press and the bloggers. Remember, you can always come home. Jesus talked to the man of the palsy and said, what you have received here is of no effect until it can happen at home. <laughs> and if there's anybody who's having hell, at home, may God pacify it in Jesus Christ's name. Just now, in Jesus' name. You cannot just be having a good time in church. And when you go home, it is hell. It is, it is, uh, it is fighting. It is chaos. It is confusion. It cannot be. Because your faith should also be applicable and should also be as forceful and should also have experience and expression at home. At home. How is your home? How is your home? Is this what we have here? Is the heaven that we enjoy at House of Grace uh, the same uh, at home? Can I come home and feel peaceful? The presence of God. The child of God's home. He says, take it. the four, fifth dimension of faith where it does not just touch you in church but it goes and touches at home it will touch your children, they may not confess it they may not be born again but they will be affected they will be affected and they will know there is a child of God at home go 
I want to finish by telling you, children of God, after everything is said and done, go home. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. I've taught them from your word, Lord, the dimensions of faith from the book of Mark, chapter 2. From being redeemed, to rising up, to taking it, to walking in it, to going home. May this be your experience, oh God, I pray. May somebody rise up, oh God. And be able to walk by themselves without being dependent. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory for this wonderful morning. Let this word, Lord, linger in our spirits, linger in our hearts. Let your presence around us, O oh God, do us well. Watch over us, Lord. And again, I pray that you take us from one level to a greater level of glory. In you, Lord, may we rejoice. In you, Lord, may we be happy. In you, Lord, in you, in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.